Hello and welcome to another Andy's Workshop video. This is a bit of a follow-on video to my previous one where I introduced you to this um, temperature sensor board that I built. It's a temperature sensor board designed to host, uh, designed to host two RTD probes that plug in, plug in here and here. Um, and when you plug them in, you get a continuous real-time display of the temperature on these, um, on these readouts here, as well as the temperature being um, sent out on the serial port um, using a USB to serial chip here. Um, to a computer. And as you can see, the whole device is mounted inside um, a three and a half inch uh, drive bay. So the idea is that you, you just slot this into the um, drive bay of your computer and um, the, it screws down into the two and a half inch mounting holes and it can operate uh, internally. Basically, you can wire this up to um, one of the internal uh, USB ports that you can get on expansion cards and you can um, run the probes out through a, a gap in, in, the, um, in the case to, to where you want to be sensing temperature. Um, obviously, if I, there's no probes attached to this, so I'll plug it in, but it's going to show a big fat error when I do it. Yeah, initialize and show. Now, this, this was built around the uh, Lineatech LTC2986 um, integrated. It's, it's basically um, a temperature to uh, digital um, chip. It does everything. It's, it's a really quite an awesome chip if you look at the specs for it. Um, and the um, the accuracy for it is, is really good. It's uh, you know if you were to put this on a properly designed PCB and pay attention to all the um, the, the the details, you could probably uh, use this as a 0.1 degrees C reference. It's really that accurate, but it's also very expensive. And um, you know it costing expensive for a hobbyist that is. You know it costs about uh, 26 pounds plus VAT here in the UK, which brings it around uh, to 30 pounds just for one IC. And there are other alternatives on the market. And since I had a load of other parts left over um, after building this, I thought, you know, why not try out one of, one of the alternatives? And this video is about showing you uh, that particular alternative, which is the um, Maxim Max 31865 um, resistance digital chip. So I'll show you the board that, that I've uh, designed around that. So here's the blank board for the uh, Maxim Max 31865 design, uh, placed next, right next to the old LTC 2986, so you can see just how similar they are. Basically, all I had to do was, um, was rip out the analog side of the board. There's a cut in the, in the ground plane here that's also mirrored on the bottom. Um, and what I call the analog side is where um, the temperature sensors come in um, to the uh, Max 31865s. There's two of them, obviously, because the Max 31865, unlike the Linear Tech, is only capable of handling a single sensor. Um, the Linear Tech one can handle just a, an entire multitude of them, depending on the configuration. Um, but the Maxim is a much simpler device. Um, simplicity is good from the, from the point of view of uh, actually being able to build the thing. Um, they come in an, uh, an SSOP20 package, which is so easy to handle, it's, it's not a problem at all. It only requires, um, apart from uh, the usual decoupling on the power supplies, um, the Maxim devices um, only need uh, one external component, and that's um, a reference resistor. And with um, that reference resistor actually uh, gives rise to um, some of the problems that, that this you can have with the Max 31865 that limit its actual accuracy. Um, if you're going to use a PT100 Pro, which is probably the most common, and it's the ones that I'm using, then the recommended reference resistor value is 400 ohms. Now at 400 ohms with a PT100, the excitation current that the Max 31865 will generate, um, the excitation current is uh, the small current that is passed through the, the, um, the probe, which is, the probe is basically a resistor, so it's passed through that resistor that, it, that forms the probe, through the reference resistor, and then the uh, voltage drop is measured uh, inside, the, inside the Max 31865. Now with a 400 ohm resistor, it uses four milliamps as the excitation current. Now to give you um, an idea of comparison, I'm using half um, a milliamp, basically 500 microamps on the LTC 2986. And the reason you choose a very small value is to limit self-heating. When you pass any current through a resistor, you're going to get heating of some sort. Now, four milliamps um, is known with the Max 31865 to generate a problem called self-heating, where the, the current that you're using to measure the um, temperature generates a temperature of its own. Um, that's bad, clearly. So to get, to, to get around that and to minimize the effect, um, I only sample the probes at one hertz. So the, the sampling frequency is very low. And during the sampling, during the period between samples, the excitation current is turned off. So I, I limit the amount of self-heating that's generated by these things. But it does overall limit their accuracy. And, and you wouldn't probably want to use Max 31865s in a reference design. I don't really think they're quite up to it. You could probably get this, um, you could probably rely on this to about plus or minus a half a degree C, I think. 
Um, but on the positive side, they are super easy to work with. Um, it's a serial peripheral interface, SPI, across to the MCU. Um, and once you've set the thing going, you basically put your MCU in a loop, just turning the excitation current on, waiting for it to stabilize, um, receive the, the uh, ADC value from the um, MAX31865, um, then you switch the excitation currents off. Once you've read, read, read the output from the 15-bit ADC on these, uh, on these chips, it's a simple calculation to convert the ADC value uh, in the, using the MCU's more powerful uh, you know, um, circuitry. Um, more powerful logic into an actual temperature. And by contrast, the linear tech actually out outputs a real temperature. It, it doesn't b bother you with the ADC value. You can get it yourself if you want, but the linear tech uh, outputs um, the actual temperature, which kind of alludes to the um, presence of a floating point processor somewhere inside there, which may uh, you know, lead to some of the reason for the uh, high cost of the device. Um, so okay, given that the analog side has been completely switched out for the um, for the Maxim parts, digital side is more or less the same. I made some changes around the um, ISP header, which I'll go into later. But first, let's get the built device up. Well, put the linear tech out of the way, and I'll show you it all built up. Okay, so here it is, all built up and um, plugged in and ticking away there, showing the current temperature. Two probes are attached here. Um, one is a pretty decent probe, not very high cost, about £20 in the UK. It's a, I can't even fit it in the shot here, but it's a long uh, stainless steel um, probe from a company called Thermosense. This one's pretty accurate. It, it's, um, well, it's, well, it appears to be accurate, I have no reference. Um, it, it appears to ref correctly reflect room temperature. The other probe is a generic one that I got on, e on eBay. Uh, it's basically a no-name probe. It's a load of rubbish. Um, it was off by about uh, 7 degrees um, C when I got it. It's one of these. They're very common. You've probably seen them. They're, they're advertised as PT100. Although, of course, without actually breaking this thing open, you wouldn't know which one, whether it really is platinum inside it or whether it's some, something else. The fact that it arrived 7 degrees off the, um, adver you know, the correct room temperature is a bit worrying to begin with. But that was easily corrected. It's the, um, it's the, blue, it's the blue figure, the eBay one. In this um, in this shot, and it's showing a bit higher than the than red because I was just minute, I was just holding the end with my finger for a minute there. Um, I've applied uh, a constant offset, a calibration offset, to uh, make it match the Thermosense probe, and hopefully, um, hopefully, a constant offset is all that's required. If um, you know, if these probes are actually are off by some kind of non-linear um, offset as the temperature changes, then that would be not good at all. Um, but I'm not, I, don't, I don't tend to use the eBay one for anything serious. It's just a test that, uh, that, I, that two, simultane, two, two simultaneous probes are working fine. So what have we got? We've got the Thermosense one coming in here, the eBay one coming in here. Both of them go down some, uh, some traces to the, to the maxim here. The traces are length equalized because I know it's not much difference, but you know it's 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 free to make the uh, it doesn't cost anything to make the lengths equal on the PCB as they as they snake the way down to the um, the uh, Maxim chips there. Um, the Maxim does the digitization. This, the um, SPI interface comes across the border between the analog side and the digital side to the MCU here. <coughs> the MCU is sorry down here. This is um, an Atmega uh, 328P, just as it was in the previous one, the popular chip that you see on the Arduino. Um, every one uh, one second, the temperature is polled and they're displayed here, as you can see. This is, this is a Max 7 triple uh, two or double two one. Can't remember. It's um, basically a driver for these LEDs. They're, they're, it's a it's an old old device, but really very very useful. So easy to program. The whole board runs at um, 3.3 volts, um, except this Max uh, Maxim thing, which uh, requires basically a five volt device. And annoyingly, the uh, the, the input high level for um, for, for talking to it is 3.5, so you can't talk to it with a 3.3 um, 3.3 volts uh, MCU. So I've got a little uh, step up uh, text instruments um, step up chip there um, that's it's used to uh, connect the serial the SPI interface through it at, into it at 3.3, out at um, 5 volts, and onto the uh, maximum. It does the job very well. You just sort of set it and forget it. Um, and the other little IC down here is a microchip MCP2221, which is a DIP um, USB to serial converter, uh, of the kind that you would be probably familiar with from companies like FTDI, but this one is really nice. It comes in a DIP um, implementation, so I can just stick it in a socket. Um, Rumour has it this is actually a, a PIC, uh, a microchip PIC in there in some hardwired form, uh, which is kind of interesting. Someone takes a PIC16. Um, whatever, it works. It really is plug and play. You just put it in, um, connect, hook it up according to the data sheet values. No programming needed when it's switched on. It just switches on and starts doing USB to serial. It's, it's really nice. 
Um, so that's that's really that's really it. Um, I just wanted to introduce um, this to you and show you that um, I want you know how it uh, performs um, relative to the linear one. And it's about. It, I mean, I can't tell. It's about the same. It just works. Um, people say that these Maxim chips aren't as accurate. Yeah, maybe, whatever. Uh, for my purposes, um, they are accurate enough. And I think I've taken um, all the precautions necessary to avoid the problems with the um, self-heating effects. One last thing before I sign off. Um, I just wanted to mention the ISP interface because this is something I have um, something I think is quite important that I've changed my design for um, when I'm using 3.3 volt boards. I use this as a programmer. It's a USB ASP. They cost you know, a couple of pounds on eBay. You've probably got one if you're into programming at Megas. Um, and I bought one with this little selector jumper here, 3.3 volts uh, to five or five volts. And for, for you know for the longest time, I'd been assuming that that actually switches the voltage of the whole board. I.e., when you switch when you select 3.3 volts, I assumed that it would power this at Mega. It's what's it at Mega eight or something? I assumed it would power the whole thing at 3.3 volts, including the uh, programming lines and the reset line that come out of here that connect to the to the board. It doesn't. When, it, when you select 3.3 uh, volts, the only voltage that changes is pin two on the um, on the header here. Pin two is the supply from uh, the USB ASP to your board if you want to power your board from the USB ASP, which I just never do. I always have it powered uh, like this, you know, as you're looking at it now for, to the computer and the USB ASP directly connected here and I'll, I'll program it on, you know, just go round and round and round programming and programming and testing and testing. So I don't need power from this. So I leave pin two disconnected in the design. But with, you know, for the longest time, I've been assuming that, that um, the signals coming in would be 3.3 three, uh, 3 volt levels, but they're not the five, they're five volt, even when that's at three. Now with this particular board, I've got multiple peripherals on the SPI bus, so when when this is being programmed at five um, and, and it's pushing in five volt um, levels on the uh, you know MISO and MOSI and the reset line, but I've got a three point three point three volt SPI devices here on the bus, and it, it this could be damaging. I don't know whether these uh, other devices are tolerant to those high levels, so. In this particular implementation of my ISP interface, I've used um, I've used Zener diodes to cap the um, input voltage, the in of the levels to um, 3.3 rather than 5. You can see it in the schematic when you look at my um, you know, uh, website. You, you read the article there, but basically the idea is that um, you know, Mosey, MISO, um, the serial clock, and what's the other one reset on the on the USB ASP. Um, have got zeners on them um, to cap 3.3 volt zeners to make sure that the levels don't exceed 3.3. Uh, I checked it all out with a scope and obviously I tested this and breadboarded it before actually putting it onto um, an implementation like this. And it, it does work. The, um, the levels are successfully capped and at the low speed of the ISP interface, it's not a problem. You wouldn't want to go sticking zeners and resistors in, in series of the um, serial lines if you've got, if you're planning to run it, you know, at multiple megahertz, but the serial, you know, the um, programming lines are much slower than that. Um, so that's just the last uh, design feature I wanted to uh, mention on here. And it's a technique you may want to use yourself if you've got um, you know, a header like this for programming and you've got 3.3 volt SPI um, chips on your, on, your, on your board and it doesn't say anywhere in the data sheet that they're tolerant to 5 volts because if they're not, you could end up with damage. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's the, uh, that's the last thing I wanted to say. Um, the full write-up for this uh, board is on the uh, website. I'll link it in down below this video. Um, please read the write-up if you want. You can get the Gerbers for, for this board, so you can build your own. You can get the, um, the firmware. It's free on GitHub, of course. Um, so if you want to build one of these, you can do. Um, and, and I think people, you know, I think people are more likely to build, hobbyists are more likely to build this implementation than the linear tech one, simply because these Maxim uh, chips are so much easier to handle. Um, and they're so much cheaper. They, they, they're um, even with two of them on here. They're less than half the price of the linear linear devices. So yeah, that's good. I wa I wanted to do this just to get it out of the way and sort of prove that you know I've done both approaches: that this sort of really accurate linear one and the uh, cheaper Maxim one. And I'm happy with the outcome. Now I can move on to the uh, the next thing. That's out of my mind. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.